Good morning or afternoon yeah. or evening afternoon. or whatever time of day it is in your world. Happy time zone, everyone. Welcome. Sorry, I was going over to get into Discord and <laughs> lost my way. And of course, we are live. So yeah, that's about right. We are live. So welcome everybody to Side Channel Attack, Influencing Casualty via Exploitation of the Choice Vendor with the illustrious Ed Miro. Happy to be here. Is that, a, is that a good is that a new word of the day? Are we no. screaming every time the word illustrious comes up? Yeah, <laughs> maybe. Where it is, illustrious. Yeah, we should. We should do that. Like come up with a word that we have to try and use in a sentence and it makes sense but a fun word so if anybody has any ideas for our next hack and cast of a word that we should use let us know because that would be fun so everybody sorry we're you know this is pre-show banter thankfully it's not the actual content yet you show up early because we show up early. We show up early because you show up early. It's this vicious cycle that we just are just going to keep repeating till the end of time. So we're excited about it. So welcome, everybody. This is our second hacking cast using Zoom. And I think we're nailing it. We were playing with the filters earlier. And um, <laughs> it's really fun. And Jake, look at Jake's filter. Isn't it fun? It's just his name. Nailed That's it. Good. Nailed it. Yeah, we went live and my camera quit. So Aww. working on that. Yeah, he is here. He's not just a name. He is an actual person. For <laughs> See, real. He's in an undisclosed location. Yes. He could tell you where he is, but then, you know, we, we don't want to do that. And so we were just talking before um, the... We actually came on live, and Belda, of course, has our question of the day, which I we did, always. Like. I also want to remind people that we are in the Discord server, yes. the Wild West Hack and Fest Discord server today, and I put a link in the chat bar here because I know how to do that. You're fancy. I mean, I'm you've fancy. got like a virtual background. You're like nailing this whole Zoom thing. I was freaking out because I thought. If I hit start, that it was going to start the broadcast because like go to webinar is so different and like you panic over there. So I still have like a little PTSD, but I'm working through it. Um, so yeah, let's see. So let's see. We got some, we got some people. We got smithereens. Woo -woo. Hello, smithereens. We love him. Yeah. And who else do we have with us today? And where are you from? That's what I want to know. Where's everybody from? Undisclosed government bunker. <laughs> called, aren't they called skiffs? We done. I was just on a training class with the Help Pomerantz, and we had two people on that training class from um, Sweden. Central California. <laughs> they said, save me, please. <laughs> well, we'll be in Southern California soon, coming up soon. We're going to be in Way West Hack and Fest 2022 in San Diego. So hopefully um, people will be able to join us there. If you can't join us in person, then please um, register for our virtual event if you are um unable to attend what oh yeah oh you mean that thing behind you i was over in discord i'm like so, trying to, to hold it up like I'm yeah i'm trying to hold it together so there's that <laughs> so i'm going to post a link in um in the live chat channel uh, for those of you that are on zoom we are in discord and it's where the little cow head is i think it's a cow i don't think it's a bull but i guess bull do have horns i don't know it's cows I think, not I think bull. we should open Bulls not it up cows. as a panel discussion is this a bull is this a cow what's happening <laughs> is there a, a difference bison. Ah, yeah there you go eric g 
And that was also like, is the bull a steer? I, there's there there's all this terminology. So my mom ranches. Yeah. And there's all this crazy terminology, and you get corrected all the time when you have this conversation with her. But is it technical or just like different vernacular? It's it's vernacular. Uh, there there is like maybe we should have your mom on a hacking cast. And she can <laughs> yeah, that would be us. fun. Maybe she could get the camera to work, right? Yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> I betcha. Yeah, there's like if it's a male and it's uh castrated, I guess, then it's one term. Right. If it's yes, not, then if it's, it's another. If it's and for those of you, Jake, do you want to explain castration? <laughs> No, that's not. Like, I don't think, I think that if people don't know, they don't just don't need to know. They just Hard pass. Know. If it's not castrated, it's a bull. And if it is castrated, it's a steer. If you've there seen you one, of, uh, oh, one of John's good. talks, no. gets, it could be far worse. Yes. <laughs> All I remember is hearing about goats. That's nuts. <laughs> let's, let's not. <laughs> not talking about goats this time. That's what David said on on the uh, banter. On the uh, banter. That's nuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just reminds me of Pretty in Pink, or no, not Pretty in Pink. Um, the Breakfast Club when he's like, "Mess with the bull, you get the horns." Best one of the best movies ever. Agreed. So welcome everyone again. This is not the actual. Um, hacking cast yet this is what we call pre-show banter uh the actual content will start at the top of the hour um what what was what was that that gift that you just posted oh um, it's oh called my gosh, Not really sure. yes <laughs> oh so funny so um before we get completely <laughs> into the oh geez um <laughs> let's oh i gotta stop looking at discord for the minute <laughs> so um we uh there are a couple things uh, you will get a email from us tomorrow well w when does the email go out actually is it tomorrow ryan or is it right after the actual hacking cast for the certificates i believe it's the next day okay so we're still kind of we for those of you that don't know we've we've transitioned from GoToWebinar over to Zoom so we're still kind of learning all of the ins and outs so please be patient with us we um, we will be sending a certificate of completion um, and it's through a, a, a like a plugin for Zoom so it kind of looks spammy but it is the actual certificate of completion um, it's from Gutenberg get. so look from for Gutenberg. Gutenberg yes. So um, that is a little bit different. <clears throat> it's not a fish. It's yes. the certificate. Yes. That's what, that's what you would say, though. Right. right. I know. It seems if, if you are not comfortable, then you can certainly send an email to me, the innkeeper at wildwesthackandfest.com, and I will make sure to send you a certificate of completion if you don't feel comfortable opening our links. Um, we also have Way West um, coming up. Um, I posted a link to that in Discord. We also have some really cool training coming up. Um, before we get all the way into pre-show, I wanted to make sure that I put um, a link to our upcoming course catalog or our upcoming training events in um, Discord as well. Um, so I will do that, but some of the um, some of the ones we have a, a newer class that is um, coming out soon and we we definitely want to make sure that people are aware um, of it it's offensive tradecraft it's introduction to pen testing so for those of you that are kind of looking to get into the field join us um, that's April 11th through the 14th but I'll also put um, a link to the upcoming training calendar we have a couple of classes going uh three classes this week um and we also have john sop class coming up at the end of the month so there's lots of really cool stuff that we have um going on over here at anti-siphon training which is and megan i want to just bring up yeah mr ed who 
That's that's terrible. That's a horse. <laughs> oh, yes, I was going to talk about it. I'm class sorry, too. Ed. I did not mean the famous to Mr. Ed. <laughs> that just totally did not come out the way it was supposed to. But yes. Ed has yes. a training class coming up with us, and I'm super excited. Social engineering. Yes, I'm that's glad you there. And I I think that I could actually do this in real life because. <laughs> that's it it just looks so much fun so you how did you talk a little bit about that it? ed like i mean did you just were you like hey i'm gonna try and talk my way into a building this sounds like fun <laughs> so like the 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 thought process behind the the class was there there are a lot of really good advanced se courses out there and and i i'm i'm not trying to compete with any of these companies that offer really high-end training but in in that lies a huge problem for most people it's completely inaccessible like sure it would be great to fly out to florida and spend eight grand for a week of training i'm sure it's you know stellar training but that's just not accessible for most people and as as an instructor accessibility is really important to me and as our open educational resources. So, uh, I, and I also found that a lot of people, while they could just go buy a book on social engineering and kind of do what I did, which is learn yourself. Um, I have a very like specific history and a very aggregate, this very strange aggregate skill set that kind of helped me to become good at social engineering and become good at socializing and public speaking and a, a large niche you know the, the the very people that are looking to this type of training they're missing like this this subset of skills that are kind of necessary to be good at social engineering just just reading a book on se is not going to give you the ability to go out there and do it unless you're good at communication you're good at public speaking you're good at working with other people you know all these like soft skills that kind of get ignored in our industry. So I I came up with the idea for this class to not only give people a basic introduction, like I said, I'm not trying to be an advanced course on social engineering. This is an intro level primer. And I also kind of weave in some of those like communication skills and interpersonal skills and professional development skills, things that you really need as a foundation to really be able to take an advanced training or take up, you know, advanced book on the subject and really be able to apply it. So and that was a very long-winded answer. I think it's so cool. And I am really jazzed about this training class and I am planning to set Great. on it just because I think I just think it's cool. <laughs> I do too. I mean, I, I think it's just so fun. I mean, I think that I I could do it. I mean, I really, I mean, I think that I do do it on a regular basis. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we all kind of, we all kind of do it. It's the problem is is kind of figuring out when you've been socially engineered, right? <sighs> yeah. And and that is something I, I really realized that I I have been socially engineered, um, you know, in, in almost every position I've been in. But I, I, I also one time had had somebody tell me that they thought I could get them to, I, they thought I could get anybody to do anything. Mm. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's rather, it's rather in, interesting. So I'm super stoked about it. I'm also stoked about having you at, at Way West, right. um, providing um, the Lock Village and, um, yeah you know, um, well, and, the and or the, the, the workshop. workshop. And, and the workshop is really like, it's a, it's a separate entity from the, the SE class that we were just talking about. And, and the workshop is an opportunity for people who may not have had the, you know, taken the, the classes that I've taken and, and had the experiences that I've had that kind of, you know, there's this thing in social engineering where a lot of the people who are really good at it, it's, it's kind of an open secret that it's hard to teach that. And some of the best people in the SE domain are just kind of naturally good at that stuff already. And that's kind of why they're good at social engineering. And I created this in-person workshop because I want to give people opportunities to practice communicating one-on-one, communicating in small groups, communicating in large groups. And, and I, when I was in college, I did 
uh, and I'll talk about this later in my talk, but I, I did student government and I was the ASB president and I've gone to leadership conferences and, and I love like these kind of like fun icebreaker games and these different soft skills that a lot of people just don't get the chance to, to, to practice. And, th and that's one of the things with like what Jason does with uh, Toastmasters is like, that's a, if you want to be good at social engineering, you have to practice socializing with other people and interacting with other humans. If you want to be good at public speaking, you have to do public speaking. That's, there's no like tricks. Right. It's just practice. And that's, what's cool about Toastmasters is you get a, an opportunity once a month to practice public speaking. So we don't really have a lot of these things for just like soft skills mm -hmm. and socializing. So that, that's the, that's the TLDR for the workshop is like, come spend a few hours with me and break out of your introverted shell and just get some experience and get some exposure. Like I, I was like terribly introverted my whole life. And just through like exposure therapy, just different opportunities, you know, going to college and student government and doing theater and just kind of just all these little things that kind of contributed to me being who I am now. And I recognize that a lot of people just don't have those opportunities. So I've kind of manufactured it for them. That's so cool. cool. Yeah. So cool, Ed. Now, this workshop that we're going to do at Way West, um, it, it can only be done in person, right? So if, if you're planning to come virtually, we will not be able to do this workshop. But if you're there in person, I'm going to highly recommend um, that you that you come join us for this workshop because I just think it's going to be so cool. <laughs> and Jake's on. He's back. He's awesome. He's still with it. <laughs> um, he was air so it's fine but it also ed's training class that's coming up i think is going to be super i'm i'm super stoked for it probably be, being non-technical um i think that this is something i'm really gonna grab on to and enjoy so right. thank you again ed thank you for for doing that training thanks for being part of the, doing the workshop at, at way west okay. um bringing the lock village the lock picking village i mean i'm just super excited you're such a great addition to what we're doing over here so thank god, you god help so all right i have a question of the day yes before we get too far into it i'm gonna post it in discord but the question of the day is nearly 60 percent of people say this is something they wouldn't buy used what is it Nearly 60%. I don't want to cause a any more problems. Brush. Shoes. <laughs> toothbrush. Ah. Dieter asked where you find the, your questions of the day. Aren't they, well, in like, are they in your no, your newspaper? Maybe. Or not? It's a secret. Maybe. Because if maybe I tell you where I find them, them, then you can find you the answer. Your own polls. I'm not going to be socially engineered like that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, smithereens. <laughs> Repeat the question. The question is, nearly 60% of people say that this is something they wouldn't buy used. What is it? Keep it clean, people. <laughs> Shoes. <laughs> or not. We already talked about Rocky Mountain Oysters. <laughs> oh, Again, mm. <laughs> <Easy D -N> <laughs> records. <laughs> Do they even make silly Dan records like in real life anymore. I love Steely Dan. What if it's something super obvious, like a cell phone? Like, can you imagine Earrings, buying a used underwear? Cell phone? And that's what I said, Eric G. I said underwear when we Oh were my gosh, we already have a we have a winner. I thought this was gonna take much longer. Steely Dan records, really? Earrings? <laughs> it's, it's underwear. No. <laughs> the answer is drum roll, please. Earrings. 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 Huh. Okay. Now I gotta be honest. I bought earrings at me too. Garage sales. Well, I and I brought them home and I called them. Yeah, I've worn friends. Like I don't know. That's weird. I don't see what the big deal is. But maybe, I don't know. Some people are weird. A lot of people are weird. Yeah, speaking. <laughs> of <laughs> the company weird. included. <laughs> True. <Yeah. clears throat> hey, Jason, this is the second day this week that we're wearing the same shirt. I need you to get out of my head. 
What yeah. are you doing, man? Why are you copying off of me? Yeah. They totally like yours coordinate. Looks orange. They're yeah. like, are, are you going to be on this meeting? Are you going to go? Yeah. Like Ryan and I coordinated too. Oh, look. <laughs> Zelda, we really dropped the ball. It would have been a three-way tie. <laughs> All righty then. Matter. Always looks orange. It does look orange. Better? Not as weird as like better safety, or worse. Better. Better. One, one or one. two. Cameron two. Cameron <laughs> with the lighting. We actually just took uh, two of my six kids to the eye doctor to get their uh, eye exams done, and man, my poor, my poor little girl. She is blind as a bat. Oh, that's okay. So Maybe bad. Two. Yeah. She couldn't even read the biggest letters on the thing, oh, man. No. Oh, yeah, man. it was well, so bad. <clears throat> well, well, that's I mean, okay. My my prescription's really bad, and I do photography, so she there's hope. <laughs> there's hope. <laughs> he was like, he was like, okay, eyes, really challenge accepted. <laughs> I got my yeah. glasses when I was in second grade, so it's been a long while. I think yeah. the. Uh, it's a stigmatism that makes it even yeah. worse than the actual nearsightedness. Yeah. I so have, you have I a have problem both. with like driving at night with like car lights. Do you? That's Not terrible. No, for me. no, I don't. Well, probably because of your glasses help it because mine, I wear contacts, but I also have a stigmatism, a slight stigmatism. And it makes driving at night really difficult with it, especially with the new headlights. I mean, they're so freaking bright. It's like straight to the brain mm -hmm. light. I don't it understand. Does. Some of those are not even street legal, but you can still buy them and put them on your car. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. understand. And when when like, um, you know, tractor trailers have like the huge <sighs> light bar, it's like, what the like, what are you lighting up here? What It's like just the road, like calm down all this of is, the interstate yeah that's right they're social engineering you <laughs> megan yes get out of the way yes for intimidation well no i just floor it and get the hell out of their way <laughs> but i mean so it works yeah. right maybe, maybe that's their point maybe <laughs> maybe because i'm definitely gonna win like i've won every <laughs> stoplight race that there ever was um even <laughs> that though there people, ever was that they don't know that they're actually racing me, but it's always a race. A That's stop. why you win. Yeah. Yeah. Why do, why do I believe this? I never I believe with it, me, but I totally believe this. I, because it's the truth. <laughs> because you can tell when I'm lying because I'm terrible at it. So um, I'm definitely not a very good liar. So yes, I, I definitely race at every stoplight. I, I'm, I try and get in the in the pole position it's from it's from a kid growing up and playing pole position i think <laughs> yeah. hey. good game and meet yeah. the parents where he goes where he's racing the father-in-law <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes that is totally me it's oh. every single time and my kids are like, really, mom? Like, do we have to? And they're like, yep, sorry. I got I to gotta keep my street going. Well, I did just get a new prescription and I got the blue light in them. The blue yeah. light thing, whatever. Yeah. Like it has made a difference. Huge. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huge. These glasses I have are about a year new and I got the blue light on them. And it's insane how much of a difference it makes. It's so funny that you said a year new instead of a year old. A year new. Hmm. Very, <laughs> a different way. So sorry if you can hear my dogs. dogs. Like it. <laughs> I did say that, you know, people are weird. Yes. And you did say, speaking of. Yes. So, I mean. Yes. You, I mean, you definitely come in clutch every single time <laughs> for that. So for those of you just joining us, the hacking cast will start in about five minutes. Um, this is what we call pre-show banter. Uh, you show up early. We show up early. We show up early because you show up early. It's this vicious cycle. <laughs> yes, that is me as a child. 
uh, <laughs> coming in with Corvette was coming definitely what I wanted. Um, I do drive a Camaro, so um, I do like to speed, and I have definitely gotten caught <laughs> and <laughs> paid that price. So, um, welcome everybody to today's hacking cast. <laughs> Is that you? And that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Same, totally the same for me. So. Wait, is that you driving or is that you in the passenger seat yeah. with eyes wide open like, oh, no. <laughs> that, that would be me driving and Velda beside me going, oh, no. Oh, gosh. So welcome, everybody, to today's Hacking Cast um, with Ed Nero. And we're super excited. He's going to be coming to Way West and he's got a class coming up. It's just so much fun. Doing some stuff. I was eyes forward. Yes, I did. On pole position, you're damn right. I was aces at that game. And I just translated it to my real life. So there's that. So what else do we have going on, guys? Well, we have another hacking cast next week. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, if you would like to head over, it's Groundhog's Day again. Oh, God. Cybersecurity <laughs> Loop with Stephen Spence. Um, a registration link is up there. If you'd like to go over and register for that as well, uh, be another great hacking cast from your friends at Wild West Hacking Fest. Ooh, that was a good promotion. That was. You nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> Lots um, of upcoming training from Anti Siphon. Um, let me see. Um, we're going to be, let me see, our Deadwood page, we're going to work on getting speakers and everybody announced. If you were on the um, the news on Monday, which I thought was fantastic, Ryan. Um, yeah, it, it was, was a good one. John was on it. Then it's on, it's on YouTube, right? They can listen yep. to it. It is on YouTube. I, I can get the link for that. It was, uh, we had a couple special guests. We had Jake Williams with us and then we had, um, Jeremiah, I want to, is it Jeremiah? I Fowler. think it's Jeremiah, Fowler. but I call Jeremiah him Jeremiah, Fowler. but I think it's mm -hmm. Jeremiah Fowler. Uh, Fowler. Mm -hmm. yes. And he is currently in Poland. He was living in Ukraine. He lived there for 10 years and he evacuated to Poland within, you know, everything going on. And so he was giving us our, uh, giving us his perspective of, of uh, what he's seeing. Um, and as a, uh, a researcher in infosec he looked up a, a lot of interesting stuff about the whole situation so i will get that link and drop it in yeah it was it was really good jeremiah is also um derek rook from san diego is one of our keynotes and jeremiah fowler um is another keynote at way west and in, in san diego so we've got some awesome awesome people that will be speaking out there um, so if you haven't gotten your ticket, please do so. Yes, please. You hacked my battleship. <laughs> I'm being Vanna. There's going to be a, 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 <laughs> we have be a, a question really real fun. quick before we get going. Uh, Velda, someone's asking, when is the agenda for Wild West Hacking Fest gonna, going to be posted? It should be soon, right, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah we I, I actually worked on it yesterday and we've got it pretty it's pretty solid right now um so we're working to build it on the website um and so we'll get that out as quickly as we can but we've got some great great speakers tony sager um as i mentioned jeremiah Derek rook um hal pomerantz um kevin johnson so Tony is coming. That's Tony awesome. Is absolutely him. coming. Tony is he going to is he going to bring his is he going to bring his band with him? Well, I asked him to at least at least throw in the guitar. Yeah. So it's it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we're going to have a great time. We're going to have dinner on the USS Midway on Friday night. So for anybody who comes in person, they'll get a ticket to that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also if, if you are coming to the conference, if you buy a ticket, you are, you do, you will have the option to uh, buy a ticket for a significant other um, to go to the dinner on the Midway too. It's going to be awesome. We had so much fun when we were out there. So know. you know what? It is 12 o'clock. My yeah, time, one o'clock Eastern. Um, so we should probably uh, give this up to 
to Mr. Ed Nero. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling him Mr. Ed. I think that that's the first. That's time. why I said Miro. I'm sorry, Ed. I my just... next, my next hack and cast is going to be horse themed. Do it. So, and then that's your fault, Velda. Yes. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today. We really appreciated it. Of course. Thank you so much. All right. All right we're all going to duck out and let Ed take over. All right. Okay. So I have shared my screen. I will wait for the, I'm going to keep an eye on discord chat. So uh, please let me know if you can see my screen. It just looks like uh, a website called Nearpod. Great. And I'm going to go ahead and start this up. We're going to start a new session. Now I, I am a community college teacher as one of my jobs. So I'm kind of one of those teachers that likes to have fun, be a little silly. And I like using audience engagement tools like Nearpod. So I dropped the link in Discord. If you go to app.nearpod.com or just go to nearpod.com and click join session, you'll, if you click the link I dropped in Discord, it should take you right to it. And you'll be able to not only see my slides on your device, if, and it's best to use a phone or a tablet, but you can just use another browser window. And you'll also be able to interact with me. So I'll give you just a couple of seconds to get connected there. I can actually go over here. I can hide student names and I can click on teacher. I can see that there's quite a few people already connected. And if you just want to go ahead and respond to this, to this prompt, you can put whatever you want in there. This is just for me to see that people are able to connect to the tool and that you can hear me. Let's see. I know Kung Fu. Awesome. Someone is saying re here. Cool. So. Make sure you can connect to this. If you want to participate, that would be great. And I have been recently inspired by, if you don't know who Jeff McJunkin is, you should definitely check him out. He's an amazing speaker and teacher. Uh, he did a keynote talk for an event I put on a couple of months ago, and uh, he's really inspired me. And I, I'm trying to emulate his style of having a two-way dialogue with my audience. So if you have questions, comments, put them in the chat because I'm going to be paying attention to that. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the beginning here. Okay, so my talk today, which I use the term talk very loosely. Uh, like I said, I want this to be a conversation and I'll kind of tell you a little story about how this talk came to be. And I actually wrote an essay back in December. And I, in addition to going to school for computer science, which was my first associate's degree, I actually went back to community college and I, I studied a handful of things that have nothing to do Okay, looks like we're breaking the tool because more than 40 people are trying to use it. So if you can't get in, I'm really sorry. I did not pay for a premium license because this is the first time I'm testing this tool. So please bear with me if you, if you can't get connected. Um, but when I went to school after studying computer science, I actually started with religious studies and I studied philosophy. I did a short period of theater studies, communications, and then actually ended my community college education studying cultural anthropology. So if you take a look at that background and who I am, if you add all of those things together, it kind of makes sense that I would study social engineering. I'm endlessly fascinated by humans. I'm endlessly fascinated by psychology and sociology, just the way humans interact, the way we communicate, and especially from an anthropological point of view, um, and we will talk about determinism. So <clears throat> uh, there's very, very, I have a lot of things to say about a lot of things, but I don't claim to be an expert when it comes to philosophy. Uh, so if I say something that's completely wrong, feel free to call me out on it. I definitely appreciate feedback. 
So I had one of those days where I'm feeling deep and I'm the kind of person who likes to think via writing. And I will write these essays and some of them never get published. And some of them are just for me to work through certain ideas that I'm having, certain thoughts that I'm having. And I started thinking about determinism. Now, <laughs> determinism is a branch of philosophy that has to do with cause and effect. And you'll see that there is a huge part of the matrix, uh, what is it, a quadrilogy now, uh, that has to do with this idea of destiny or this idea of free will. And there are interesting things when it comes to philosophies like determinism. And determinism says that based on some first like causal event, everything that we experience is based on an endless chain of cause and effect. And if you want to think of the Big Bang as the first cause, or if you want to think of some like religious creation event as the first cause, it's kind of irrelevant to like determinism. And I'm just speaking like very generally. If everything is just a, an endless chain of cause and effect, and, and they go so far as to say that even thoughts and ideas even the chemical reactions and the electrical stimulations in your brain are still based on a chain of cause and effect. And that's like the TLDR version of this idea called determinism. Now, I'm not saying that I necessarily subscribe to this idea, but it's very compelling. And it's very interesting to think about whether whether I'm the person I am now because I made a conscious choice and had any type of control over who I am, or if I'm just the result of cause and effect. And I'll explore these concepts later, but let's move on to the next slide here. Okay. So, and I apologize if I cough. <clears throat> I did have a cold last week and I'm almost over. Okay, so I went to community college and I studied religious studies and I studied philosophy and I, I did theater and I also took part in student governments. And I was actually the ASB president one year. And this is when I first started learning about leadership. And we got the opportunity to attend leadership conferences. And this is back in 2004. And I remember the first leadership conference I went to we saw this video called the Abilene Paradox. Let me know in the chat, and I'm specifically talking about Discord here. Let me know if you've ever heard of the Abilene Paradox before. Just a simple yes, no. No, no, no. It's kind of old school now. I want to, it's not really like in vogue when it comes to like personal development or professional development. Um, okay. <clears throat> so I'll tell you a story so you can kind of understand what this is. So imagine there's this family and they're all just kind of hanging out and they, they live, they live a couple hours from Abilene and the, the grandfather says, Hey folks, how, how does ever, how does it, how does it sound if we all just uh, head on into Abilene and, and eat dinner at the old diner that we all love so much and, you know, they all kind of look around each, at each other and uh, the, you know, the mom says, yeah, that sounds great. And then the dad says, I'm, I'm in. And, you know, the, the kids are like, all right, let's go ahead and let's do it. And so they do, they, they load up the car, they drive into Abilene and it's very hot. It's just the summertime. And this is kind of like, you know, this was written in 1974. So they didn't have really good air conditioning in those days. So it's kind of a miserable drive to Abilene and they get to the diner and it's, it's not very comfortable. The food isn't very good. And, you know, they drive the two hours back and it's, it's equally uncomfortable. They, they've spent now up to six hours, just being uncomfortable, not, not really enjoying themselves. And, they get home and they're, they're having this like post conversation. And, you know, one of them says, you know, we, we should have never went to Abilene. That just was miserable. And then the other person says, well, you know, I, I was only really interested in it because everyone else was so on board with this idea. 
And then the mom says, well, like I only was supporting it because grandpa was, was seemed really excited about it. And then grandpa says, I only came up with the idea because I thought everyone would like it. So the, the Abilene paradox is kind of this management concept and it's kind of this leadership conference concept that says we can get into these situations with this like toxic agreement, this, this like uh, paradox where everyone's kind of afraid to rock the boat and to be the person who, you know, says something that's contrary to what the group believes. And, and that can lead to the entire group agreeing to do something that they never wanted to do in the first place. And I, I, this, this idea of the Abilene paradox has always stuck with me. And, and I wanted to share this with you uh, to start off uh, this talk. So um, think about the Abilene paradox, think about toxic agreement, think about Think about situations where maybe everyone's agreeing on a certain path that nobody wants to take. And I know this is kind of random, but I, I think about companies like Black Hills and I think about leaders like John Strand, and I think that they've done a really good job at being very cognizant of this, like, you know, agreement, uh, Abilene paradox sort of situation. And I, I just really appreciate uh, the courage to say things that may be unpopular, but may be the correct answer. And I would, I would encourage you to take that with you. Okay, so I'm done telling that story. Uh, this is the sort of agenda here. You, you're gonna notice that my slides uh, lack a lot of words. This is probably the wordiest slide. Um, most of my slides are just for something for you to look at and for you to, to, to let me talk. And so I've broken this down into six sections here. And if you're a penetration tester, uh, aspiring red teamer, you kind of understand the workflow here. So we've got number one, reconnaissance. And we're gonna talk about the matrix. Um, number two, scanning and enumeration. So we'll talk more about determinism and what it means and uh, what its uh, possible uh, effects are. Uh, initial compromise, talk about causality, uh, whether it's something that we're bound by or whether it's something that we have influence over. Uh, four is escalation. And I'm going to use the game of blackjack to kind of make a, make a point here when it comes to uh, causality. Maintaining access, and, and then finally, we'll we'll do cover your tracks, and we'll talk about how this, and I'll, and I'll try to bring all these concepts together. And the overall theme I want you to take away from this is social engineering works, and it can work on yourself. And I know that that's something that's going to be hard to accept. And I'm a very rational and skeptical person. I have a really hard time believing that sitting here in the morning with my book. And if you've never heard of this, this is called the five minute journal. It's actually really useful. And I'm sure you've heard, if you're into leadership or personal professional development, I'm sure you've heard of people mention journaling. This, this thing is, it's the same thing every day. You write the date in there, you do some daily affirmations, you write down things that you're grateful for. And then at the end of the day, you kind of review how things went. Uh, it's a really easy way to get into journaling. It's, a, it's an easy way to focus on gratitude um, and then daily affirmations. And I, I know I think that it's a silly idea to think that standing in a mirror talking about how I'm amazing and I'm beautiful and everybody likes me. And to think that that could actually have a material effect is kind of ridiculous, but it 100% works. <laughs> The, the brain is stupid and you can totally SE your own brain. It's, 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 you know, it's the reason the, the placebo effect is a thing, right? The brain's not that great. Anyways. Okay. So it looks like we're on the next interactive part. I know only a certain amount of you were able to get into uh, Nearpod. So Let's see, I want to take a break from talking and I'm very long winded. So if you have questions, please try to interrupt me. I don't know if I should be paying attention to the 
Zoom chat. I haven't been. So if you have questions, please put them in Discord. Uh, go ahead and on your device, just draw me a picture. You can draw where you're from. You can draw something completely random. Please don't troll us too hard. I'm trusting you not to do that. Uh, but I can go back over here to the teacher view and we can see what some people have done so far. All right. I know it's a little hard for me to see on my tiny screen. Hopefully it's a little bit better for you. Let's see. Cool, cool. So that one maybe over here. I like doing these kind of interactive things. Um, I'm a community college teacher. And if you've ever thought about getting into education, I guarantee you your local community college would totally appreciate your skill set when it comes to cybersecurity. And teaching at the community college level is very, very doable. And a little trick that you should know is that what students really get the most out of when it comes to uh, like a, a lesson is just your passion and then their ability to have fun and, and your ability as an instructor to have fun. So that's that's kind of a, that's a little tip for you. It has little to do with what I actually say, more to do with my enthusiasm. So cool. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next slide, but thank you for participating in this one. I can see that some of you are drawing. I can see that some of you are all over the, oh, cool, nice. I wish I could I have, I have this tiny little screen. So it looks like I'm looking at you. And it makes it hard for me to see where you're where we're all from. So, all right, let me take a look at the chat here. Okay, so Tio Supremo, do you like the Miracle Morning Journal? Nice. Yes. Yeah, sorry about the the Nearpod. I'll I'll totally pay for the uh, license when I do my next class that we talked about earlier. So the credentials to teach at a community college, it really depends on your specific discipline, right? If you want to teach history or math or a science, a real science, a hard science, you, you need like a master's degree, at least for a community college. Uh, for classes like I teach, cybersecurity, and my classes are all geared around getting people certifications. Like I teach Network Plus and Security Plus and Pentest Plus, CASP. I have a bachelor, I, I, I have an associate's degree. I just also have 20 years of experience in IT and 10 years experience in, in, in cybersecurity. So some, some classes are totally doable. All right, I, I wanna talk about the matrix now. So Neo, he, he has a hard time accepting destiny, right? Um, he, he doesn't like the idea that he's not in control of his own life. And if you're like me, which I'm sure you are, you, you identify with this, right? And that's kind of like a huge theme in the matrix is that Neo senses at a certain level that he is bound by his destiny, <clears throat> but he wants to try to take control. Um, so I'm gonna build a false dichotomy <laughs> and a false dichotomy is just an illogical set of choices. There, there are other choices beyond these two but uh, just for the sake of argument, we'll say that there are most people who feel like they are masters of their own destiny, uh, feel like they're in complete control and have the freedom to do and say what they want. Um, but then there are also others who have accepted that crushing reality of their own personal causality. Neo's destiny equals permanent short beard. Hey, don't, don't talk about Neo that way, okay? And just, to, just in case anyone is wondering, the fourth matrix. I loved it. I'm a huge fanboy when it comes to the matrix. You cannot convince me that it's a bad movie. I love Lana Wachowski and everything she does. So I'm a huge fan of the new movie. Hate me if you want to, that's fine. Okay. Um, so like I said in the beginning, I'm not, I'm not a philosopher. I'm completely uncredentialed. I'm completely unqualified to have this perspective. It's just based on my own anecdotal experience, but I actually think both sides are valid when it comes to this philosophy. I think that there is a certain amount of determinism that we are bound by, but I also think there is a certain amount of free will. And I think that they're more balanced and I think they're more 
influenceable than possible. And I have some points that I can use to try to drive home these ideas. I mean, like I said, these are just my opinions. Uh, I'm not saying I'm right. I, I feel like I am, but I, I mean, everybody feels that way, right? Um, my feelings have historically been pretty unreliable, so I don't know if I would uh, follow them completely. I'm just a guy who was feeling philosophical. I wrote this talk. I actually just wrote an essay, which I'm using to give this talk. Next slide. Okay. So um, I'm, I wrote this essay. I'm, I'm pondering leadership, right? And this is something that I think about a lot. I'm, I'm actually reading this book here called Leading with Character. It's by Dr. Jim Lur. It's, it's all about focusing on your legacy and how that should uh, drive you to be a good ethical moral leader. And the book is actually great. It starts off with this thought experiment where you imagine yourself on your deathbed, or actually I think it's post-death. I can't remember. But you, and you, go, you have this funeral, it's this hypothetical imaginary funeral where everyone you've ever interacted with in your entire life, people you've forgotten or people you've had in your mind insignificant interactions with, all get to speak at your funeral. And they don't, they're not going to give a eulogy where they're just trying to make you sound good because you're dead. They're going to be completely honest about how you made them feel. And if you can imagine that, then that should cause you to want to make good choices when it comes to leadership. And uh, that's, that's, that's a good book. Um, I recommend it if you're into leadership or that stuff. So I'm a teacher. I'm also an instructor. Like we talked about in the pre-show banter, I'm doing a webinar for Anti-Siphon. I'm also going to be at Way West doing some workshops there. Uh, so I think about leadership a lot. I think about how to be a good teacher or, uh, oh, sorry. I think about how to be a good mentor. Um, so I've been alive for 41 years and I, ha I have a lot of privilege, right? I have a lot of experiences that have given me a, a very special life that I, I realize not everyone else will, will have that same opportunity. You know, I'm, I'm extremely lucky that, that I was born and grew up in the 80s, right? Um, in the United States, in California, to a middle-class family. Uh, I had a computer at a young age. Um, you know, there's this statistic, and I don't know how scientific it is, but they say there's this huge correlation with success in the IT world with, the, with, with uh, access to a computer at a young age being like, being massive, right? And I had zero choice in any of these things. So I'm speaking to you now and I get to do speeches at conferences. I get to do workshops and uh, get to talk about things that I'm passionate about, but I really had zero choice in any of the things that led me to this point, right? So it's hard to accept that hard, hard determinism, right? And like, there, there are a majority of things that are, are the, there's a huge majority of things, like I said, that are a result of that long cause of a cause and effect chain, right? That, that you can trace all the way back to the big bang or whatever first cause that you personally ascribe to. So it's a fact that where you're born, when you're born and what family that you're born to, it's 100% outside your control. So um, regardless of who you're going to be, you're bound to the causality of that. It's not fair. Uh, and if you feel like it, it's not fair, you're totally right. And it's not fair that I was born the way that I was. And I, I can empathize with that. And I can emphasize with those who realize this and decide that it's not worth trying. Um, causality can be a prison, right? Um, and trying to oppose that feels like wrestling with the universe. <clears throat> but um, I think that there is something that we can do. Let me see here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. 
So let's talk about what we can do about that. Um, we, we've all seen examples of people breaking those chains, right? Um, Every day, people lift themselves from poverty uh, using no more than a cell phone. And you know, there are children from poor families that go to Ivy League schools. That they found startups, and that's great. And we've also th- seen the inverse of that, which are you know these trust fund kids that seem to fail no matter what, or uh, super rich losing everything, right, and falling victim to their baser tendencies and politicians with unlimited power seemingly that still seem to fail in the end. So it's like, yes, causality is a thing and determinism seems very valid, but we've seen people kind of break free from that chain, right? We've seen people born in situations that have kind of all the odds stacked against them um, become super rich. And we've seen people who have been born with generational wealth and every possible privilege who seem to fail. So so what's the answer here? Uh, Well, we need to understand that causality is more of a gray area, in my opinion, than intuitively understood. Um, I'm going to talk about blackjack here, and I know this is a ridiculous analogy to this conversation, but I I think it makes sense here. And to, I have seen people commenting about the uh, subject matter here. And technically, I never did talk about, uh, I did, never did mention that I was going to be talking about security. And the name of the talk is, is intentionally ambiguous and confusing and kind of using ridiculous words like the architect does, you know, vis-a-vis. Um, and it, in fact, it's so confusing, the title, it's been mis quoted a couple of times, but I just let it go because it's even more funny that way. So blackjack, it's one of the fairest games when it comes to the edge the house has over the player. And I used to be really into this stuff back when everybody was really into poker. I was more into blackjack because statistically you can, you can study a specific betting strategy and you can reduce that house edge to, to almost even odds. And if you deploy more advanced techniques like counting cards, you can shift the odds to the player having the advantage. And this doesn't mean you're going to win every single hand, but if you do follow a specific betting strategy, if you do follow advanced techniques in the long run, you will make money at blackjack. So that's kind of a, a very spurious way to like think about causality and free will. It's like you may have been born into a certain path, but it doesn't mean you're going to win every 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 hand that you're going to get. Um, but if you decide to live intentionally and to, to, to do things that are going to help you get towards to, to where you're going, I think in the long run, you're going to win. All right, I'm going to take a talking break here. I'm going to switch to the next slide here. Let's hear it from the audience. What's the best Matrix movie? I I tend to agree with most people that the first one is is classic. Let's see what let's see what everyone else is saying. It's like 20, 20 people have said the first one. <laughs> it's like overwhelmingly the first one. Yeah. And like what I, I actually agree with dead meat. My favorite one is the animatrix. If you haven't seen that it's, it's Canon and it falls between the second and the third movies. It's beautiful. And it's a series of short, uh, Short films, all animated, different styles, different animators. Highly recommend you check that out. Yeah, a a Morpheus prequel would be pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to move on now. Thank you for participating in this very scientific poll. All right. So I'm going to try to sum things up. So my hypothesis here is that this analogy 
this blackjack analogy can be applied to our lives and it can be used to influence our causality. So, so no, we won't win every hand. And it's over only over the long run that the effects of our influence can start shifting the trajectory of our lives. And it starts right here, right? Um, it starts with me being able to speak to you. So you've had no control over your destiny, but your destiny has led you to hear my words and it's led me to say them to you. And maybe we had no control over those circumstances, but <clears throat> how we choose to go forward will have an impact on our destinies. It's not, I don't think that you're completely bound by hard determinism to getting to a predetermined destination. I think we can exert influence over that. So to get started, we have to have a destination. So what are your goals? What are your dreams? Um, these are kind of cliche questions that, that come up. Uh, what would you do if you could do anything? What's your ideal situation? Have you, have you ever like actually thought about it? Or if you've thought about it, have you ever actually written it down on a piece of paper? And if you're not writing your goals or your plans or things that you want to accomplish down on a piece of paper, on a list somewhere and making it tangible, then it's just a thought. And you could argue that your thoughts are really important, but until it becomes tangible, until it comes out of your head and goes into a different medium, I don't think it's very actionable. So I, I would recommend after this talk, or even right now, you just kind of take a few moments, think about those questions, physically write them down. Um, you, there is responsibility in taking those dreams and making them into something you can touch. Um, I know you've heard all this before, right? Just do it. And I know like as a very skeptical person, I hate the idea that taking a book like this five minute journal here that I look at every day and I write down things that I'm grateful for, or I write down daily affirmations and some of them seem ridiculous, but they really do have an effect on my life. And I'm not saying I'm the most perfect person. And some of you may have had negative interactions with me in the past, but I'm trying to be a better person and I'm trying to take control and I'm trying not to be just bound by my causality. And I'm, I'm seeing positive effects in that way. And, and, and many, many people are too. And the first thing I had to do was break free from the, from my own skepticism that daily affirmations are valuable. Like I said, your brain is susceptible to social engineering yourself. And if you sit there, there's a story in this book about this sprinter. And he, he I think he was a decathlete. And he ran a, he ran a, a series of uh, uh, um, different events in, in college track. And he hated running the, like the 100 meter or the 1,000 meter. And the coach actually spoke to the author of this book. And the advice given to this coach was, take this piece of paper that says, I love the 1000. And he gave it to this athlete and the athlete had to spend every morning saying to himself, I love the 1000. I love the 1000, like a hundred times a day. And as, as like asinine as that sounds, and as like skeptical as this athlete was, he did it. And after a few months, he found that he really did love running the 1000. It just, it makes no logical sense that this should be possible, um, but it is. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the next slide. All right, so until we have that idea of where we wanna go, uh, we, can't, we can't just make choices. We can't make choices that support that goal. So this doesn't mean that your goals can't shift or change, but you should hear some of the random jobs that I've, I've done throughout my life. Um, I've been an EMT. I've been an adventure tour leader. I got paid to take foreign passengers in a 15 passenger van around the Western United States on road trips for money. I've been a, I've been a telemarketer. I've been, a, now I'm a community college teacher. And I, I don't think there's a one size fits all for what each of us will define as success. Um, but I encourage you to think higher level than specific careers or specific accolades. Um, so 
one piece of advice I have uh, is to be open to new experiences. Uh, say yes to opportunities that come your way. Um, each decision, small or large, they will influence your trajectory. So may maybe the hard determinists are right, uh, but we shouldn't allow that to stop us from acting as if they aren't. And there, there is some value in that. You know, you've already made the choice. You're here to understand why you've made it. That is such a frustrating line. Let me know in the chat if you have any idea what that means. And just to kind of speak to being open to new experiences, I was talking to I was talking to Velda. Uh, she was on the pre-show banter earlier, and she she thanked me for for finding Black Hills and for helping out and doing the different things that I do. And I kind of didn't find Black Hills. Black Hills found me, and I told her the story where. I, I, a couple of years ago, the only thing that I knew about Black Hills was the game Backdoors and Breaches. You can see I have a couple of decks over there. Um, I bought a deck from online before I knew anything about Black Hills or anybody there. And I wanted to play Backdoors and Breaches with my friends and with my students. Uh, but we're in the, we were in the middle of a pandemic, right? Every, everything was like super locked down. So what I did is I just decided to scan in all the cards and I made a mod for Tabletop Simulator, which I didn't share publicly. And I tweeted out to Black Hills like, hey, I did this thing and I'll totally share it and make it public if I have your permission to do so. Um, but please don't sue me. And it just kind of like disappeared, right? Like I put that out there, my friends, played with me we did it on stream a couple of times and then jason and deb which you should know uh reached out to me and said hey we really like this thing that you did and no we're not going to sue you so you're you're okay but uh can you can you help us develop this and now if you ever watch any of the streams or watch any of the demos they're like super fancy tabletop mod it's a collaboration between myself and black hills and I just think that's really awesome. And just that like singular choice to, I'm gonna pirate this game and hopefully I don't get in trouble has led to me now being able to, I got invited to Way West to hold my workshops there and I'm developing a bunch of classes for anti-siphon. I could have never anticipated that trajectory but I was just kind of like open to new things, right? I don't know. I know it's cliche to, to tell people to say yes to things but I kind of do say yes to a lot of things and it's, 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 uh, it's, it's led, it's led to a lot of interesting situations. So <clears throat> anyways, let's move on. Okay. <sighs> nice. Cool. I appreciate you all chatting and interacting with me. I know I'm kind of like that guy who's sitting around the like, campfire in the backyard at the party drinking too much wine talking about philosophy and i just appreciate you sticking with me hopefully it's making sense uh, it makes sense in my head <laughs> um anyways and i hope it doesn't come across as preachy like i i recognize that my life is based on like incredible privilege and things that had nothing to do with me and were completely outside my control and i and i recognize that like I just happened to go to community college and I just happened to take like a public speaking class that led me to doing theater. And that just happened to lead me to being a ASP president one year. And that just happened to lead to me eventually becoming a community college teacher and being, being able to speak at DEF CON and, and all these different conferences. And I don't know. So I hope I'm not trying to, I hope I don't come across as being preachy. Uh, I just want to like help people and, and knowing that my specific experience is something that's kind of unattainable. I think there are things that can be learned from it. And that's kind of what I do when it comes to my workshops is like, I've had these experiences that have helped me. Let's try to manufacture these types of experiences in a way that can, can share that with other people and they can benefit from what I've learned. Yeah, these are these are side channel attacks for your own brain. All right, so so I believe this stuff. Um, 
I believe in the power of uh, gratitude. I believe in the power of daily affirmations. I believe that your brain is susceptible to social engineering yourself. Uh, I mean, I see posts every day from people who are tired, frustrated, unhappy. Um, there, there are plenty of reasons for apathy and nihilism. Um, I've heard it said before that you can completely justify being a nihilist these days and being completely apathetic, but I, I would hate to live that way. Um, but it's completely logical to take that stance. So I'm, I, I want to, if you're, if you don't agree with me and you're very apathetic, I mean, I, I validate that. Um, but I'm also a hacker, right? And one of the things that hackers do is we see a problem in a different way than most people. And we understand that there are tools and ways for us to try to solve those problems. And maybe solving those problems comes in a way that's outside the box. Maybe it's more of a side channel attack anyways. Um, so I don't want, I, I don't believe that we have zero control over our causality. I believe we have seen examples of people breaking out of that sandbox. And as a social engineering wannabe subject matter expert, I've seen countless examples of leaders in this domain uh, using their ex expertise and the things that they've discovered about the human mind and the human brain through studying social engineering. And being able to use that to drive incredible per personal development, uh, leadership, uh, philanthropy. And if you, if you don't know this, I'm gonna give you a secret and that people are always worried about social engineering and it's kind of a joke, right? Everyone's like, oh, this guy is gonna social engineer me. But <sighs> social engineering really isn't that effective if you're just gonna like, grab a book about social engineering and learn a few different influence tactics and, and try a few techniques and little tips and tricks. Like, yeah, I mean, you can, you can succeed at it, but it's not going to be as effective as if you were just were a genuinely amazing person who, you know, people feel good about interacting with, you know, stimulating that like neuro dopamine response in the brain. Like, if you like me or I make you feel good when I interact with you, like that's more powerful than any social engineering tactic or technique you can devise. And the reason is, is that human beings, you know, homo sapiens, we're a tribal species and we have these evolutionary imperatives that we're really, really in tune with like social interaction. And people experience cognitive dissidence and they experience like in, incongruencies as uh, it being uncomfortable. So if you deal with somebody who is trying to abuse techniques of social engineering, um, it, it doesn't last forever. Those people are always found out. And yeah, we've seen we've seen a lot of uh, examples of people who we thought were one way were using social engineering to try to manipulate and influence people in a negative way, and they always get discovered. And the best leaders are not people who are using social engineering as a trick. They're not trying to weaponize it. They're just trying to be the best people that they can be. So you just naturally want to follow and listen to them, and the one of the best books on social engineering and i know a lot of people hate when i make this uh, recommendation because it's a very dated book it's from the 20s how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie love it or hate it it is the best book on social engineering and it doesn't teach you how to social engineer people it teaches you how to be an awesome person that people will just like to be around and want to be around and listen to and be led by and that's like the real secret to being an effective social engineer. It's not to learn tricks and techniques. Like if you take my intro to SE class that I'm teaching through Anti-Siphon, I will teach you all the techniques. I will teach you how to use GoFish to, to create a phishing campaign. And I'll explain different influence tactics that you can use to drive behavior. Um, that stuff's really easy to learn. 
the book I just mentioned was How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so like I said, this is what I'm trying to do in my life. Um, in my day-to-day, -day, I constantly try to bring these ideals into focus. I do my five-minute journal. I focus on leadership. I focus on what I can control. And I try to make decisions that will get me closer to my ultimate goal. If you've read uh, Code of Trust by Robin Dreek, if you're an SE nerd, um, I recommend Robin Dreek. He talks about focusing on your ultimate goal. And that's really important. And, and uh, yeah. So I feel I still fail a lot, um, but I'm going to keep trying. Yeah. And they've, and I recommend reading the old version. I know there's like modern versions and just keep in mind that the language and some of the concepts are, are very like of the time. So it's, it can be challenging, um, but it's a good book. <laughs> yeah. Code of trust is amazing. All right. Let's go to this last thing here. So this is just a collaborate board. Uh, it's part of uh, Nearpod. If you have questions, I know we're kind of using the Discord chat, but you can post GIFs on here. You can post like funny pictures. Um, any thoughts that you've had? Any questions? Are you having an existential crisis right now? There are people set up to help you through this. See if anyone's still here. And again, I apologize for the uh, the attendee limit. I didn't know that this many people would show up to hear me spray about philosophy. As good as I can be so far, no complaints. That's great. I haven't read How to Lose Friends and Alienate People, but I feel like I could write that book also. Thanks for your insights and personal story. I just want everyone to like succeed, you know? Like, I think a lot, of, I think there are two types of people who are born with privilege. There are some people who want to protect that and feel like that life is like a pie and there's only a certain amount of pieces of pie to go around. And then there are some of us who want to share and teach people to do whatever they want to do. Like, I, I get that I started life like on second base, but I can teach you what I know and help you to get to wherever you want to go. And that's kind of like my goal. Uh, I love being a community college teacher because I get to see my students get jobs and I get to see them succeed and I get to help them avoid working for shitty MSPs like I had to do back in the day. And uh, if you're looking for a job, Make sure you check out Jason's stream, Banjo Crashland. That guy is a genius. Let's see if I can read some of these. Don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah, that's exactly right. I got lost so, on where you were going with multiple times. Me too. I totally agree with that. Uh, to punish me for my contempt for authority. Fate has made me an authority myself. That's deep. Be excellent to each other. Amen. Get good at what you do every day. Yep. As, as, as they say, right? Try harder. <laughs> yeah, definitely uh, follow Banjo. Jason's the best. I love that guy so much. All right. I'm going to move on here. So I'm going to, I know I'm at 47 minutes. I'm going to see if there are any other final questions. I'm going to give some shout outs here and do a few promotions. So obviously I want to thank Black Hills Information Security, um, the whole John Strand family of companies, uh, especially thank Velda, Jake and Ryan, everyone at Wild West Hacking Fest and Anti-Siphon InfoSec Training. Um, I'm going to be teaching the Intro to Social Engineering course that comes up at the end of this month. It is pay what you can. Like I said earlier, a big one of my principles as an educator is accessibility. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so I made my intro to social engineering course, uh, pay what you can. 
So I recommend you take that. I'm going to do it every quarter. So if you don't get in this time, uh, don't worry, I'm going to offer it uh, four times a year. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a couple of workshops at Wild West Hacking Fest. So if you're going to Way West in San Diego, uh, you can take my Social Engineering for Introverts, which is hands-on. Uh, it's kind of like a mini leadership conference where we do like one-on-one -on -one breakouts, small group breakouts, uh, large group activities. It's like I'm trying to distill all of the different experiences that I've had throughout college and uh, learning to be a public speaker and, and condense that down into like a course that you can, it's, a, the crash, it's a crash course on socialization. Uh, and I'm also going to be doing a lockpick workshop, <laughs> uh, basic lockpicking, and we'll also set up a, a little lockpick village there. So if you're into lockpicking, I love, in addition to social engineering, I'm really into physical security. So definitely check that out. Um, thank you, Jason and Deb, uh, for finding me and connecting me to these awesome people. Uh, if you see on the middle there, I have like my own honorary uh, Backdoors and Breaches card. That's it. That's that's all I've got. Um, I know someone in the chat asked about the katana. That, that's something I bought when the pandemic started. It was like a stress impulse buy. It's a cold steel practical plus. So it's like a real sword. I mean, real, I guess. It's not thousands of dollars made in Japan, but yeah. It's a, I, I, I did, I did take Aikido a few years ago and our sensei at the time used to throw in some Iaido, which is like the drawing of the blade and some basic stuff. I could not sword fight. I'm, I'm not like skilled at all. I do jujitsu now. So I just got it cause I always wanted one and uh, now I hang back. So that's a sword that can hurt you, right? It's, it's very sharp. And uh, yeah, it's like, if you've, if, if you've never seen a cold steel video on YouTube, they're like the most like ridiculous like uh videos of them like stabbing through cars and stuff with these things they're like high carbon steel yeah. jeez serious business yeah but uh well dev and jason say hello i i was told to relay that message so i love those guys they're the best they are Thank pretty you awesome so much for coming out today this has been great i'm I, I was glad to do it and like I know that some of the people were kind of confused by it and that's totally valid. I mean, I think it was very confusing. I mean, even I'm not really sure how I feel about some of this stuff. And I was kind of using this uh, as an opportunity to talk through some of this uh, with an audience. And I, I think it was fun. That's pretty cool. Got to start somewhere sometimes, right? Yeah. Some, I, I like uh, InfoSec talks that have nothing to do with like technical stuff. I'm just sick and tired of like watching tool demos it's like, and like looking at code. It's like refreshing the palette, right? Yeah. We're human beings. Come on. Exactly. Some of us are. True. <laughs> yeah. Where's meta? <laughs> are there any questions that we missed? Are there any, are there any additional questions or anything that we missed in the, in the chat? I tried to keep an eye on it. Some people are burnout. Yeah, that's a thing. Indeed it is. Definitely. Is it okay to connect on LinkedIn? Oh yeah, yeah, I posted my LinkedIn and my Twitter in the LinkedIn and Twitter share channels here on this server. So feel free to, to check me out. I'm pretty sure the, the, the the conventional wisdom is you should just accept everyone on LinkedIn because there's no real downside to that. Isn't that how what people are doing these days? Just have a network. Yeah, it I depends. Mean, that's kind of the whole point of LinkedIn, I thought. That's what I thought too. <laughs> I used to be is very there, like. Is there secretive. a limit? Like, I know Facebook at least at one time, like you can only get three thousand friends or whatever ridiculous number. That why would you ever mm. do that? But does LinkedIn have a limit? I don't know. I don't even think I have more than 150 on Facebook. I'm lame. I don't know if you want more than 150 <laughs> on Facebook. I, I'm never on Facebook anyway. I get a notification. I open it. I clear it. I close it. Like, that's it. That's it. Eric I don't mentioned, do anything. Uh, being, <clears throat> being careful about exposing yourself to the scammers. I guess you can make sure you don't have your real phone number and email address under your contact info if you want to be 
opsec about it. I don't know. I do. Yeah. I do a lot of phony like, stuff, contacts. So. There's there's always going to be something like that. Right. True. All right. Well, just a reminder. Um, Ed's training class is coming up here. Um, what what are the dates, Ed? Remind me. <laughs> oh, Sorry. They are. <laughs> I don't have my calendar. Up. March March twenty ninth. Yes. March twenty ninth. Uh, Intro to social engineering mm -hmm. training yeah. class. Uh, Wild West Hack and Fest Way West is coming up May um, 3rd through 4th mm -hmm. for training, for pre conference training, um, and 4th through the 6th for the uh, conference event itself. We have lots of anti siphon training coming up as well. Um, so make sure you jump over there and take a look at our website um, and see what's coming up. That might be a good fit for you. Um, what else do we got going, guys? We're busy. We've got a hacking cast next week mm -hmm. um, as well. Uh, I think um, we have one training class next week. And Jason's like, yay. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I've got four going right now. So, yeah. Uh, Clark asked about my classes uh, being part of the on-demand offering. So the SE classes are going to be just live webinars, but I am I am in development uh, for some on-demand classes that are more technical, uh, Security Plus prep class, uh, Pentest Plus prep class. I'm designing uh, codes and ciphers for CTFs class and steganography for CTS. Um, I did a talk at PancakesCon last, not the last one, but the one before uh, called Stegosaurus and Steganalysis, where I talk about Jurassic Park and uh, Steg Analysis. So if you're into CTFs, I'm going to be developing some technical content for those who don't care about my philosophy. <laughs> well, we like your philosophy. We like all of it. So That's awesome. you're always, you, you're, you're welcome to, to come and, and philosophize with us anytime you'd like. Yes. <laughs> That's our philosophy. Yeah, That's right. yes. that is absolutely. Well, it's been a great it's been a great talk ed and i i Thanks. saw some really positive feedback here so thank you again so much for being here and yeah. again thank you for all you're doing for wild west hack and fest and anti-siphon training and um sharing your knowledge with others um you know uh, our mission here is is to train the masses right uh, to be able to train the masses affordably uh, right, because everybody should be uh, entitled to a quality education. Totally. So, um, you know, it's kind of kind of what we strive for here. Um, you know, and again, our paid training classes, we do know donate ten percent um, on not our pay what you can, but on the paid training, we do um, we do know donate ten percent, um, usually to an open source tool. Um, but we do do charity as well. Um, so we're. Uh, you know, trying to do all kinds of good things over here just to help the community and to, to continue to, to help people grow. So um, again, uh, we're, we're really thankful uh, for this time that we got to spend with you and, and everyone else on this webcast. And um, we are just about to the top of the hour here. Um, so Ed, again, thank you. I look You're forward welcome. to meeting you in, in person at, at, um, at Way West. And um, I know we'll be we'll be chatting a lot between now and then. Yeah, excited. We'll see you on, in class coming up soon. Can't wait. Yeah, I, I can't either. I, I love doing my SE class, so looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm too. <laughs> I'm blocking out that time for me. <laughs> nice. And, and to uh, the people who randomly thought this was a technical talk, I apologize. <laughs> Technically, it's not a technical talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great talk. Technically speaking. <laughs> it technically, was. it was a great talk. But anyway. Yeah. All right, guys. All right, it's time to end. I will hit the button. I will end the webinar. Well, it was great seeing everybody. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.